These newspaper article readings are not for the faint-hearted or the squeamish. If you're at all sensitive, I might suggest these aren't for you. Um, if in doubt, check the description below. It'll tell you which topics are covered in this particular episode. Uh, there's both human and animal suicides, and you heard that right. Um, there's also horrific descriptions of injuries, uh, as well as the deaths of youngsters. Um, so don't do it to yourself if you're prone to nightmares, is all I'll say right now. Not all the articles are horrible. Some of them are uplifting, some of them show incredible bravery and heroism. Um, there are near misses. Uh, so these were picked as showing life prior to health and safety, uh, as well as for the crazy and curious details some contain with uh, other miscellaneous happenings um, that kind of struck me enough to uh, post the articles um, to Twitter, uh, despite not having too much relevance to Scotland necessarily. Um, these are worldwide topics. Uh, and. They didn't have any real connection to the projects I was working on and researching at the time. I just happened to have come across them, by the way, kind of thing. So uh, we'll get into them, shall we? What we're going to do here is we're going to do a lucky dip of newspaper articles to really mix them up a wee bit, because while I'm doing the research is I'm obviously coming up with the same kind of terms and things. So, uh, we'll mix them up even further. So to that end, I have all of the newspaper titles and dates of the articles. Okay, let's see what the Lucky Dip has for us today. We have, to kick us off, the Dundee Courier for the 15th of April, 1907. Okay, so we have, all right. So we have a serious accident at Sham Fight. Fife Gunner injured. A sham fight which took place at Kinghorn on Saturday afternoon and marked the commencement of the military season at this important artillery station was attended by an unfortunate accident. The attacking force was the cyclists' company of the QRVBRS Queen's Edinburgh under Captain McClellan and the Maxim Corps under Lieutenant Munro Hall, the borough being defended by Number 11, Company 1st Fife, RGA Vols under Lieutenant Banks and the Kinghorn Rifle Company under Lieutenant Spence. The Enemy arrived by boat at Burntisland and at once made tracks for Kinghorn, but all the main roads and likely entrances to the latter place were well protected by the artillerymen. At the commencement of the manoeuvres, a regrettable accident occurred. One of the scouts of the defenders, Gunner Crossan, being accidentally hurt through receiving the flame of a rifle fired by a Queen's man in the face. The men were on opposite sides of the railway barricade, each being quite unaware of the other's situation. The Edinburgh man was in the act of firing over the sleepers in the direction of a party of scouts on a high land when Crossan jumped up, with the result that he received the full effects of the blaze from the mouth of the rifle in the face. The unfortunate gunner was at once attended to and conveyed to Edinburgh by train for treatment. It is feared he will lose his eyesight. The result of the fight, which was watched by hundreds of visitors, is reported to be a draw. The Edinburgh volunteers encamped at Kinghorn for the weekend, attending church parade yesterday forenoon in Rossland UF Church, United Free Church, Mr W Paxton, Glasgow being the preacher. That's from the Dundee Courier for the 15th of April 1907, and that really sucks for Gunnar Crossan. Um, I don't know... If he did lose his eyesight, I don't know if there was a follow-up article. Um, but, yeah, when you're play-acting, it sucks to actually get properly, well, mutilated, I guess. Um, so, oh well. On to the next. Uh, 
the Edinburgh Evening News for the 14th of June 1905. Let's see what we have here. And we're joined by a Zara cat, which is nice. Yee? Okay. So we have a marvellous escape from death, which is nice. An extraordinary accident has occurred at Messrs Cochrane & Co's engineering works at Annan. A labourer named Charles Walker was working about some machinery when he was caught and carried round the shafting. Every stitch of his clothing, with the exception of his socks, was torn from him. Walker escaped in a marvellous manner, although he sustained bruises to his back and side. And that's from the Edinburgh Evening News, 14th of June, 1905. And that's freaking crazy. That would have been quite funny to walk in and just see your colleague just butt naked on the ground in his socks, just looking completely shocked. Um, <laughs> yeah, wow. If that had been recorded on CCTV nowadays, that is the kind of thing that would go viral online instantly. Um, yeah, that that's crazy for Mr. Charles Walker there. Let's see what the next one has. Do you want to pick one? She's not interested. We have the Dundee Evening Telegraph for the 4th of May, 1903. Care to hazard a guess? I oh, just like a smell. just want to smell. Let's find out which this one is. We've had US railway disasters. Um, crazy one that got caught up in a tornado like last time. And um, this episode is apparently no different. We have a shocking railway disaster, a sad end to holiday, express dashes into big crowd, many killed and injured. It's from New York, Monday morning. A terrible railway accident occurred at Detroit last night. As is generally the case at American railway depots, there are no railway bridges, and passengers have to cross the track to reach their particular trains. Yesterday evening, about 1,500 Polish excursionists from Toledo crowded upon the tracks to await the arrival of their train, which they sought to return to Toledo. Little effort was made by the railway company to control the crowd. They were expected to look after themselves. The result was that the front ranks of the excursionists were continually being pushed by the later arrivals farther and farther across the track. They were standing in this position when the Grand Trunk Express suddenly dashed into the station. The crowd made a frantic rush to get out of the way. Many fell in the effort and others were too late to get clear. No less than seven persons were killed outright, whilst thirty others were injured. A most distressing scene ensued. The station was practically in darkness and the lanterns of the railwaymen were used to find the victims. The vast crowd of pleasure seekers, who a few minutes before were all laughing and joking, were now crying and making frantic efforts to find the victims of the party. The police assert that the train dashed into the station without blowing its whistle or ringing its bell, but the driver emphatically denies this. That's from the Dundee Evening Telegraph, 4th of May, 1903. And considering there were 1,500 of them, I mean, 30 injured, 7 killed, it could have been worse. That's kind of terrible. Uh, that They would just allow people to mill over the tracks and the railway staff have a good idea of um, train timetables, when to expect certain trains. So for them to have allowed these excursionists to just wander over the tracks, knowing that trains were going to come and, and hit them, um, seems like negligence on the station's part. Uh, I think the railway company would have likely been held uh, accountable for for that disaster. Shall we have a last lucky dip in the hopes of getting something more positive to finish us off? We'll go for this one. 
Never. We have the Glasgow Free Press for the 29th of January, 1852. Let's see what this has for us, eh, babes? Okay. So this one is entitled Child Stripping. On Tuesday evening, a woman had her attention called to the screams of a little boy in a stair in Gallowgate Street. Thinking that the poor little fellow was crying after his mother, she at first paid little attention, but becoming more interested in his distress, she discovered he had just been stripped of a polka jacket by a woman named Mary Greaves or Stuart, and who was caught on the spot with the jacket in her possession. Stuart, on being questioned, coolly stated that she wanted the garment to put on her own child. At the Central Police Court on Wednesday, the theft was clearly proven, and Bailey Mitchell, having remarked that the offence was of too heartless a nature to be lightly passed over, sentenced the thief to 60 days imprisonment. And that's from the Glasgow Free Press for the 29th of January, 1852. She just took a child's jacket off it because she felt like her child should have the jacket, not the child that was already in possession of the thing. You feel like all the stories that come out now where there are people folk like to call Karens and such, just these entitled mothers out there that you hear stories of so often these days, of them just going up and taking something out of another child's hand in a shop because it's the last one and going, no, my child is having this and, you know, just these entitled people these days. It feels like it's a very modern phenomenon. But there we have in 1852, um, really uh, the same kind of thing. So that's interesting. And it also finishes off for this episode. Amir, are you away too? Thank you for joining us for some of it. I appreciate it. And we may see you for the next one.